I ended last week on chapter 4, but only on the first part. And so I must really begin um, in verse 7 of chapter 4, because this is quite significant. It's uh, a verse that I've always been aware of, but um, <laughs> I don't know why. It isn't one that a lot of preachers would use, but it's very simple. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. <laughs> to me, that's quite serious and very encouraging in that if we do submit ourselves to God, this is conditional. And you've got to understand that verses like this, and if I can make this comment here, so many of God's promises are conditional. And it's something I learned as a, as a boy, and probably I've hesitated to talk about it. I don't know why, but almost all, in fact, I'm tempted to say all of God's promises are conditional. And you've got to understand this. People want to take God's promises without realizing that there's something attached to it. But you read them and you'll find that it's true. And this is an example where uh, James says, submit yourselves to God. Um, in verse 6, he's saying, give more grace, where for God resists the proud, but give his, gives grace to the humble. But the key verse is verse 7, submit yourself to God and then resist the devil and he will flee from you. I think this is very important because a lot in the charismatic area speak about demon possession and casting out demons. And this is nothing to do with casting out demons. It's nothing to do with demon possession. It is simply that as a believer, you have to stand up to, fight against, and resist the devil. Come on. We're in, this is an element of spiritual warfare that seems to be completely ignored. Your responsibility, and I'm speaking to you now, your responsibility is when that devil comes, resist him. Don't give in to him. Don't yield to him. Don't give way to him. And realize that it's not just enough to, to say, oh, let somebody cast the demons out, cast out the evil spirit. Here, it's a word to the Christian. I don't believe that a born-again Christian can be possessed by evil spirits. The scripture is absolutely clear that uh, good and evil cannot dwell in the same body, just as it speaks about the fruit. Can a fruit tree give good and bad fruit? No. If you're rooted and grounded in Christ, rooted and grounded in Christ, the devil is outside you, not inside. And that's why you have the power to resist. You have the power. I mean, look, I've had several attempts to assassinate me, and I can remember one occasion in the Ukraine, which was quite serious. It ended up at government level because the government actually sent boys against me to shoot me. And uh, it did. I, fortunately, I survived, but somebody did get killed. That's why it became a murder inquiry leading to the government. But when I had that young fellow pointing a gun at me, I fought for my life and managed to turn his pistol away. We were at close quarters to turn that pistol away until it was actually pointing at his leg, not mine. But, you know, what I'm saying is this. I resist it. And um, if, if anybody did try and attack me, and I sometimes have to think about it in the days in which we're living where attacks can be common in the street, I, I would resist anybody that attacks me. Come on, <laughs> both spiritually and physically. So we are told that we have to resist. But then the answer comes, the devil will run away. 
Come on, the devil will run away. That's what it says. Flee, run away. Come on, I like to see the devil running away. I like to see the devil running. I can remember when, one occasion when this literally happened because in a town where we'd seen powerful miracles in Siberia, I went back a year later and, of course, um, the, 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 there was a lot of opposition to me. And the uh, Orthodox priest was so opposed to me that he actually sent uh, a shaman, a witch doctor, to attack me. And um, what happened was we were in the open air and preaching and worshipping, and I saw this evil man coming down the street calling a storm. And as he came down the street, the storm car came towards us, following him, and it was a, a violent storm accompanied by lightning. And when he got within uh, about three meters of me, something rose up in me, the Holy Spirit, of course, and I just, in the name of Jesus, I command you to stop in Jesus' name. And as I spoke, a flash of lightning from his own storm hit him, knocked him to the ground, and he picked himself up and fled, and the storm went back with him. Now, that was in front of hundreds, if not thousands, of people. So it's quite clear we resist the devil, and he'll run away. But... You've got to submit yourselves to God. And then in verse 8, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Uh, you know, I don't think we put enough emphasis on this in our, uh, as, as preachers in the sense that we have to make the moves towards God. Yes, I know sometimes his move is towards us, but so often the, we, we lose out on blessing that we could otherwise have because the scripture is quite clear. Draw near to God, come near to him, come into a place where you can find him, and he will come. He will come. And then it goes on, cleanse your hands, sinners, purify your hearts, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your love to be turned to mourning, your joy to heaviness. Why? Only it's, it's not telling us to be sad or, 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 or to be weeping. It's a sense of a, a, a rejection of evil that's in our lives. We have to come against it. It's, it's, it's simply that we have to turn away from the world and the lust. I mean, it's talking in, in the first verse of this chapter. Uh, why, why are there fightings and wars and, and, and your lusts that war on your members? You lust and you have not. Now, what we have to do is be strong and come against these evil things. And then in verse 10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. <laughs> 